So I got a fortune cookie the other day that read, you will find an outlet for your creative genius and accomplish a great deal. Yes, fortune cookie, yes. So this is my fourth vlog so far. And what I'm finding as I'm learning is there's so many dimensions to vlogging. There's so many different ways, different paths you could take to get across the message that you want to get across. Vlogging could be narcissistic, absolutely 100%, for those who make it like that. It can also be an amazing way to share life with people and produce information for those who are seeking understanding, those who are looking for knowledge, those who are just bored and don't have anything else to do. I want to make sure that I'm giving you something that's valuable. I want it to be fun. I want it to be creative. I want it to be relatable. I want it to be authentic and I want it to be entertaining. There's a good scripture that goes like, do not be overcome with evil, but overcome evil with good. In the world, we see so much bad happening and, and mass media is, is pushing out who you should like, who you shouldn't like, how you should hate this person. That if I could just be a positive voice into the world that maybe what I say could make an impact whether it's on a micro level or it's on a macro level. Because we're all different and every single person has something to give to this world. Whether you believe it or not, you have something to offer this world. Oh yeah, you, yes you, have something to offer this world. That's amazing. The more that you can understand why you do the things that you do and the more that you can understand the world around you. So here's three things that I have implemented in my life that have helped me to understand more about myself and who I am. The first thing I've done is this, journaled. I probably have about 15 journals from the last five, six, seven years, starting from when I got in college. But journaling is important. Why? Because it allows you to get what's in here on the paper. It allows what's in here to be tangible so that it can actually be worked through. So many times we have so much things in our minds and we don't work through them. And it just sits in our minds and it produces anger, it produces anxiety, it produces fear, it produces things inside of us and it actually hinders us from, from living the fullness of our life. How we think about things is the foundation of how we perceive the world around us. Perception begets reality. If you change the way you think, you actually change your reality. That's crazy. So I want you to take a second, pause, for one second. Think about this. You are different than every single person on this planet. That there's something unique about you, because otherwise there would just be a lot of yous. I guess the reality is that you mean something. You're worth something. And I want to tell you that today. Take a second, let it soak in. You are worth something. The amazing part is, is that not only are you worth something, you don't have to validate your worth by the things that you do. What if you never had to validate your worth to people? What if you never had to carry the burden of expectation of who you think other people want you to be? What if you stopped trying to live by the standards of others, by the expectations of other people. You stopped allowing how other people see you to define you. What if you could live free from people's opinions, from people's thoughts? It's not what you do that defines who you are. It's who you are that defines what you do. So, when you find out who you are, you can start living out of your being instead of out of your doing. And that's the power of the mind. Another way that does is by getting alone. Sometimes it's good to, to meditate on the good things in life. To get separate from all the crazy of life and set yourself in a place where you can meditate on things that are good, things that are valuable, things that are precious, things that are pure, things that are, are righteous, things that are just. What I like to do is in these times of meditation, I like to be thankful. I'm thankful for the mind that I have. I'm thankful for my sight that I have it for my smell, for my taste, for my senses, for my touch, for my, my hearing, for the feet that I can walk on, for the knees that are okay, that for my legs, for my ability, for my body, for everything that I have, I'm thankful for. Thankfulness 
actually brings us into a place of greater understanding of, wow, I have so much. I have so much. The last thing I do is as I learn to value myself, as I learn to see the value in the things that I'm so thankful for, the last thing I do is this. Listen closely to this one. I try not to blame other people for my problem. If there's a problem going on, so many times we are the first people to point the finger. Oh, that's that person. Oh, this is, no, this, the reason I'm going through this is because you, your fault, you did it, you messed up, and you gotta fix it. The reason why we get offended, the reason why we're sad, the reason why we're angry, the reason why we're frustrated, the reason why we're mad at the world is a lot of times because of us. The more we stop blaming other people for the things that we're going through, and we can take responsibility for our own emotions, the more we can stop seeing people as our enemy. We can stop seeing people as the people who we're constantly disagreeing with. And we can start finding ourselves, finding not only in ourselves more peace, but we can find other peace with other people too, in a greater way. So this is just three very simple, very basic things that I have started to implement in my life in the last few years that have helped me come to a place of greater mental understanding and that have also brought peace to not only myself, but in my relationship with other people. But journaling, thankfulness, and understanding our role are three things that can help us get more understanding about who we are.